The grizzly bear also known as the North American brown bear or simply grizzly, is a population or subspecies of the brown bear inhabiting North America. In addition to the mainland grizzly, Ursus arctos horribilis, other morphological forms of brown bear in North America are sometimes identified as grizzly bears. These include two living populations, the Kodiak bear, U. A. Middendorfi, and the peninsular grizzly, U. A. Gaias, as well as the extinct California grizzly, U. A. Californicus, Mexican grizzly, formerly U. A. Nelsoni, an Ungava Labrador grizzly, formerly U. A. Ungavisus. On average, grizzly bears near the coast tend to be larger while inland grizzlies tend to be smaller. The Usuri brown bear, U. A. Lasiotis, inhabiting Russia, northern China, Japan, and Korea, is sometimes referred to as the black grizzly, although it is no more closely related to North American brown bears than other subspecies of the brown bear around the world. Native American tribes living among brown bears often view them with a mixture of awe and fear. North American brown bears have at times been so feared by the natives that they were rarely hunted by them, especially when alone. At traditional grizzly hunts in some western tribes such as the Gwich'in, the expedition was conducted with the same preparation and ceremoniality as intertribal warfare and was never done except with a company of four to ten warriors. The tribe members who dealt the killing blow were highly esteemed among their compatriots. Californian natives actively avoided prime bear habitat and would not allow their young men to hunt alone for fear of bear attacks. During the Spanish colonial period, some tribes would seek aid from European colonists to deal with problem bears instead of hunting grizzlies themselves. Many authors in the American West wrote of natives or voyagers with lacerated faces and missing noses or eyes, due to attacks from grizzlies. Many Native American tribes both respect and fear the brown bear. In Quicutal mythology, American black and brown bears became enemies when grizzly bear woman killed black bear woman for being lazy. Black bear woman's children, in turn, killed grizzly bear woman's own cubs. Sleeping Bear Dunes is named after an Ojibwe legend, where a female bear and her cubs swam across Lake Michigan. According to the legend, the two cubs drowned and became the Manitou Islands. The mother bear eventually got to shore and slept, waiting patiently for her cubs to arrive. Over the years, the sand covered the mother bear up, creating a huge sand dune. Grizzlies are considered more aggressive compared to black bears when defending themselves and their offspring. Unlike the smaller black bears, adult grizzlies do not climb trees well, and respond to danger by standing their ground and warding off their attackers. Mothers defending cubs are the most prone to attacking, and are responsible for 70% of humans killed by grizzlies. Grizzly bears normally avoid contact with people. In spite of their obvious physical advantage they rarely actively hunt humans. Most grizzly bear attacks result from a bear that has been surprised at very close range, especially if it has a supply of food to protect, or female grizzlies protecting their offspring. Increased human-bear interaction has created, problem bears, bears adapted to human activities or habitat. Exacerbating this is the fact that intensive human use of grizzly habitat coincides with the seasonal movement of grizzly bears. Aversive conditioning using rubber bullets, foul-tasting chemicals, or acoustic deterrent devices attempt to condition bears to associate humans with unpleasantness, but is ineffective when the bears have already learned to positively associate humans with food. Such bears are translocated or killed because they pose a threat to humans. The B.C. government kills approximately 50 problem bears each year and overall spends more than $1 million annually to address bear complaints, relocate bears or kill them. A bear killing a human in a national park may be killed to prevent its attacking again. Bear awareness programs have been developed by communities in grizzly bear territory to help prevent conflicts with both black and grizzly bears. The main premise of these programs is to teach humans to manage foods that attract bears. Keeping garbage securely stored, harvesting fruit when ripe, securing livestock behind electric fences, and storing pet food indoors are all measures promoted by bear awareness programs. Revelstoke, British Columbia, is a community that demonstrates the success of this approach. In the 10 years preceding the development of a community education program in Revelstoke, 16 grizzlies were destroyed and a further 107 were relocated away from the town. An education program run by Revelstoke Bear Aware was put in place in 1996. Since the program began just four grizzlies have been eliminated and five have been relocated. 
For backcountry campers, hanging food between trees at a height unreachable to bears is a common procedure, although some grizzlies can climb and reach hanging food in other ways. An alternative to hanging food is to use a bear canister. Traveling in groups of six or more can significantly reduce the chance of bear-related injuries while hiking in bear country. Grizzly bears are especially dangerous because of the force of their bite, which has been measured at over 8 megapascals 1160 psi. It has been estimated that a bite from a grizzly could even crush a bowling ball. In the past 20 years in Alaska, ecotourism has boomed. While many people come to Alaska to bear hunt, the majority come to watch the bears and observe their habits. Some of the best bear viewing in the world occurs on coastal areas of the Alaska Peninsula, including in Lake Clark National Park and Preserve, Katmai National Park and Preserve, and the McNeil River State Game Sanctuary and Refuge. Here bears gather in large numbers to feast on concentrated food sources, including sedges in the salt marshes, clams in the nearby tidal flats, salmon in the estuary streams, and berries on the neighboring hillsides. Katmai National Park and Preserve is one of the best spots to view brown bears. The bear population in Katmai is estimated at a healthy 2,100. The park is located on the Alaskan Peninsula about 480 kilometers 300 miles southwest of the city of Anchorage. At Brooks Camp, a famous site exists where grizzlies can be seen catching salmon from atop a platform, it can be even viewed online from a camp. In coastal areas of the park, such as Hello Bay, Geographic Harbor, Swikshik Lagoon, American Creek, Big River, Kamashik River, Savanoski River, Moraine Creek, Funnel Creek, Battle Creek, Nantic Creek, Kukuk Bay, and Kaflia Bay bears can be seen fishing alongside wolves, eagles, and river otters. Coastal areas host the highest population densities year-round because there is a larger variety of food sources available, but Brooks Camp hosts the highest population, 100 bears. The McNeil River State Game Sanctuary and Refuge, on the McNeil River, is home to the greatest concentration of brown bears in the world. An estimated 144 individual bears have been identified at the falls in a single summer with as many as 74 at one time. 60 or more bears at the falls is a frequent sight, and it is not uncommon to see 100 bears at the falls throughout a single day. The McNeil River State Game Refuge, containing Chenick Lake and a smaller number of grizzly bears, has been closed to grizzly hunting since 1995. All of the Katmai McNeil area is closed to hunting except for Katmai National Preserve, where regulated legal hunting takes place. In all, the Katmai McNeil area has an estimated 2,500 grizzly bears. Admiralty Island, in southeast Alaska, was known to early natives as Zutsnuwu, meaning, fortress of bears, and is home to the densest grizzly population in North America. An estimated 1,600 grizzlies live on the island, which itself is only 140 kilometers 90 miles long. One place to view grizzly bears in the island is probably Pack Creek, in the Stan Price State Wildlife Sanctuary. 20 to 30 grizzlies can be observed at the creek at one time and like Brooks Camp, visitors can watch bears from an above platform. Kodiak Island, hence its name, is another place to view bears. An estimated 3,500 Kodiak grizzly bears inhabit the island, 2,300 of these in the Kodiak National Wildlife Refuge. The O'Malley River is considered the best place on Kodiak Island to view grizzly bears. The grizzly bear is listed as threatened in the contiguous United States and endangered in parts of Canada. In May 2002, the Canadian Species at Risk Act listed the prairie population Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba range of grizzly bears as extirpated in Canada. As of 2002, grizzly bears were listed as special concern under the COSEWIC registry and considered threatened under the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Within the United States, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service concentrates its effort to restore grizzly bears in six recovery areas. These are Northern Continental Divide, Montana, Yellowstone, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, Cabinet Yawk, Montana and Idaho, Selway Bitterroot, Montana and Idaho, Selkirk, Idaho and Washington, and North Cascades, Washington. The grizzly population in these areas is estimated at 750 in the Northern Continental Divide, 550 in Yellowstone, 40 in the Yawk portion of the Cabinet Yawk, and 15 in the Cabinet portion, in northwestern Montana, 105 in Selkirk region of Idaho, 10 to 20 in the North Cascades, and none currently in Selway Bitterroots, although there have been sightings. 
These are estimates because bears move in and out of these areas. In the recovery areas that adjoin Canada, bears also move back and forth across the international boundary. On 9 January 2006, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service proposed to remove Yellowstone grizzlies from the list of threatened and protected species. In March 2007, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service delisted the population, effectively removing Endangered Species Act protections for grizzlies in the Yellowstone National Park area. Several environmental organizations, including the NRDC, brought a lawsuit against the federal government to relist the grizzly bear. On the 22nd of September 2009, U.S. District Judge Donald W. Malloy reinstated protection due to the decline of whitebark pine tree, whose nuts are an important source of food for the bears. In early March 2016, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service proposed to withdraw Endangered Species Act protections from grizzly bears in and around Yellowstone National Park. The population has risen from 136 bears in 1975 to an estimated 700 in 2017, and was delisted in June 2017. It was argued that the population had sufficiently recovered from the threat of extinction, however numerous conservation and tribal organizations argued that the grizzly population remained genetically vulnerable. They successfully sued the administration, Crow Tribe et al. v. Zinke, and on July 30, 2019, the Yellowstone grizzly was officially returned to federal protection. Farther north, in Alberta, Canada, intense DNA hair snagging studies in 2000 showed the grizzly population to be increasing faster than what it was formerly believed to be, and Alberta Sustainable Resource Development calculated a population of 841 bears. In 2002, the Endangered Species Conservation Committee recommended that the Alberta grizzly bear population be designated as threatened due to recent estimates of grizzly bear mortality rates that indicated the population was in decline. A recovery plan released by the provincial government in March 2008 indicated the grizzly population is lower than previously believed. In 2010, the provincial government formally listed its population of about 700 grizzlies as threatened. Environment Canada consider the grizzly bear to a special concern species, as it is particularly sensitive to human activities and natural threats. In Alberta and British Columbia, the species is considered to be at risk. In 2008, it was estimated there were 16,014 grizzly bears in the British Columbia population, which was lower than previously estimated due to refinements in the population model. In the United States, national efforts have been made since 1982 for the recovery plan of grizzly bears. A lot of the efforts made have been through different organizations' efforts to educate the public on grizzly bear safety, habits of grizzly bears and different ways to reduce human-bear conflict. The Interagency Grizzly Bear Recovery Committee is one of many organizations committed to the recovery of grizzly bears in the lower 48 states. There are five recovery zones for grizzly bears in the lower 48 states including the North Cascades Ecosystem in Washington State. The National Park Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife initiated the process of an environmental impact statement that started in the fall of 2014 to begin the recovery process of grizzly bears to the North Cascades region. A final plan and environmental impact statement was released in the spring of 2017 with a record of decision to follow.